Well, once again, good morning. I, uh, I want to share with you some of the things that are going on, and since it is now the beginning of Holy Week, uh, there are quite a few things going on, so I hope you'll, you'll follow along. One is that, uh, again, we've come back to some of the things we used to do before everything had to change suddenly. So we have the pew pads back at the end of the pews to let us know that you were here or change any kind of contact information. Uh, that's always helpful if folks will just share, share that with each other. It's, it's something that helps us out. We also have the yellow cards in the back of the pews, uh, the index cards, and if there are any joys or concerns that you would like lifted aloud during our prayers of the people, you can put those on the cards, put them in the offering plate when it comes around, and then uh, that'll be brought forward to be shared as part of our worship today. Also, we have in the back uh, a large print copy of the scripture reading, if that's helpful for anyone, um, so that's always available each Sunday, so just to make sure you're aware of that. Uh, one of the things we also include every week are uh, a list of the birthdays that we're aware of to share with you, and there's an omission this week. Uh, Karen Ferris has a birthday coming up tomorrow, so I want to make sure that that's on your, your mind so that you can go... <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> so it's on your mind, so you can go ahead and uh, you can wish her an early happy birthday today, as, of course, but uh, I want to make sure that that was included in our celebration. Uh, in addition, and you should look through to see, because I'm not going to share every single thing, but uh, our youth are invited to, to stay after church today to go ahead and help out getting ready for next week's festivities with the hunt that will be taking place. Um, we are always collecting donations to help folks out. We have the yellow school bus that's downstairs outside the office. And this month, because our third Sunday, where we might normally bring forward our offerings of food and other items for gifts of love or other organizations to highlight them, um, that's going to be Easter Sunday. We got a lot of flowers up here to beautify our worship that Sunday. So instead, we won't be doing that next week, but instead we encourage you to give to Gifts of Love by bringing in your items, your donations, and placing them in that uh, school bus right outside the office. And we will celebrate those just as much, even if they're in a, diff a different place than we might normally think. I mentioned the flowers for Easter Sunday. There is still an opportunity to arrange to have some in memory of someone, in honor of something. Um, and there are multiple ways to make that happen, including a, a form on Breeze under forms uh, that you can fill in and do everything, or in our newsletters, there have been the, the form to go ahead and fill out. Uh, but I need to warn you that tomorrow at noon is the deadline. It's the cutoff. We need to get the flowers all ordered and ready. Um, so uh, if that's something you still haven't done and you would like to do, uh, make sure that you, you go ahead and jump on that before you miss it. Sorry. Yes, Brett? Okay, so there are physical forms in the back of the church there. You can easily grab to go ahead and fill out and leave if, you, if you're interested in doing that. Also, every Sunday, as you make your way down to the fellowship hall for coffee hour afterwards, we have the bulletin board just outside there. Post different things, but it, they include our signups for flowers to beautify our worship each Sunday, uh, but also to help out with coffee hour, to help out in ushering, to help out in welcoming folks and taking care of things during worship with our deacons. So multiple ways to help. And we encourage you to take a look and just jump in. And, and uh, you'll, you'll, if you've not done it before, we will help you through it. Um, but uh, it helps to have as many people as possible to be a part of these things. Uh, and then just kind of closing out what I need to share with you. Uh, it is a special week here with Holy Week. And uh, today we'll have our celebration of Palm Sunday. But as we move through the week, we'll have a few other opportunities to mark and to remember some of the events of this week that leads uh, both to the cross and to the resurrection. So on Maundy Thursday, we're doing something a little bit different this year. We'll be up here in the sanctuary starting at 6.30. We'll have a time where we re-remember re, re the story of how communion began as we practice it today, and we'll celebrate communion, and then we'll move to our tenebrae reading of candles, light, shadows, and remembering the events that followed that Last Supper and what quickly developed as Jesus found himself more and more alone. Then on Good Friday at noon, we'll be over at our partner church at Avon Congregational Church uh, for a brief service over there. And that, of course, will be to think about the events of that Friday and thinking about the cross and everything that occurred. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll be right back here again. And uh, bright and early at 6 a.m., we'll be gathered out here on the patio uh, and have a, a communion uh, sunrise service. Everyone is welcome to come to that. 
And then at 10 a.m., we'll be here for our worship uh, of Easter and our special music and celebration. And afterwards, our young folks will be invited to head out to have their Easter egg hunt. Um, So a lot of things that are taking place. Want to make sure that you're aware. Certainly invite others if you think it might be of interest to them and and include them in these events. Are there other announcements or news we needed to highlight this morning? Things we need to make sure everybody's up to date on? Did I cover it all? Wow, nice. Okay. If I covered it all, then let's pause for a moment as, once again, music music leads us forward through our worship. And now, if you feel comfortable doing so, I invite you to rise and to welcome one another to worship. You can introduce yourselves, you can wave, say hello, you can bump elbows. If you're comfortable doing so, you can shake hands. Uh, but just greet one another in the name of Christ as we, as we join in worship here this morning. Frank? <laughs> We do like to take a moment to also welcome folks who are worshiping uh, from home. So if you want to turn around for a moment, just wave to the cameras up here in front of the choir loft and, uh, and, and welcome them from afar as well in our worship. Um, once we've done all of that, I want you to grab your bulletins and if you would, uh, join with me and we'll share our call to worship to get started today. I actually like this. I love that folks are visiting. It's fantastic. But let us now share this. It is holy to gather. It is holy to sing. It is holy to be generous, to throw our coats on the road. It is holy to celebrate justice when we see it. It is holy to shout, Hosanna. It is holy to remember. It is holy to gather. It is holy to sing. Here and now, Let us do all of these things. Amen. Folks, if you're comfortable doing so, grab those uh, hymnals, number 192, and we're going to sing all glory, laud, and honor.
thank you so much. Please be seated if you would. Um, I'd like to invite the young and the young at heart. If you would come forward, I could use some help with our worship here this morning. Are there any who will help me out? We have a special thing we want to do here for our worship, and I could use some helpers. I will take any age... Young, young at heart, and I mean it. I, so I say that phrase because it, when I lived in Pennsylvania, at my church there, I had two worship services, and the 8.30 service was kind of early for some of our young people, and so I would do the children's time, and, and I wouldn't have any children sometimes at 8.30, and there was a gentleman in that service, he was in his 70s, and he came to me and he said, I like the children's time more than anything else, it's actually the part of the service I understand, uh, so I said, well, I will do it if, if, you'll, if you'll be there, if somebody will be there for it. So every Sunday he would come up and sit for children's time so that sometimes it was just me and him and we'd, we'd have our, our children's time. So young and young at heart, I mean it when I say that. So this is Palm Sunday, okay? Now, most of the time we think about palms, we think about, right, right here in our hands. But these are actually palm leaves, okay? And... On this Sunday, we're going to hear a story out of the Bible, and it's a story where Jesus and his disciples, his friends, are coming to Jerusalem, but they're doing it at a time where a lot of other people are also coming to Jerusalem. There's a really special days they're celebrating together, and so they're making their way in, and as they're making their way across the valley that goes down and then way back up into the city in front of them, There are all kinds of folks that are coming, and they are singing, and they are celebrating, and they are worshiping. And in the midst of that, Jesus and his friends start to make their way, and he rides in humbly on a very humble animal. But people have heard about him. People have heard that he's been helping people, he's been healing people, he brought folks back from the dead, he's been telling them about God, he's been sharing about how much God loves everybody, he's been doing amazing things. Some people know who he is, other people are hearing it just then, and so he is riding in with the rest of everybody else, but we hear that folks are like, wow, it's Jesus, and so they start taking their cloaks off. And throwing them down on the ground to make a a makeshift red carpet, like a special event. And then we hear that they're singing, and also some of them go and they grab the branches, the palm branches that are around them, and they start waving them in the air like pom-poms, right? Like cheerleaders, like celebrating and having this wonderful time to sing songs of praise. And it's an amazing, amazing moment. I can't even imagine how that felt for Jesus, Because it hadn't always been easy, and not everybody was happy with what he was doing. But here was a moment where people were just celebrating. They were celebrating God, and then they were celebrating him too. And that had to feel pretty amazing and wonderful. Well, we want to celebrate too. So we have a lot of palm branches here, and I need two things to happen. One of them is the first. I need you to help me to hand out palm branches to everybody here in church, including the folks who are upstairs. I think we've got at least one or two, one at least. And once we've done that, we're all going to come back to the front, and I'm going to have you come with me, and we're going to do a parade with everybody cheering around the sanctuary, okay? You're going to lead the parade? Very nice. Excellent. I'm excited too. That's great. All right, so do you think you can handle that? All right. Now, folks can have more than one. All right. We have so many. We have plenty to share with folks. Sometimes people like to take extra because then they take them and they fold them into crosses, which is a really neat way to go ahead and think about this and celebrate Jesus, right? So folks can take as many as they want, but let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to hand you some. Don't take off yet. Just because you get them first doesn't mean you get the jump on this, all right? All right. So you're right there. You're right there. I'm going to get some more branches. And I really appreciate your willingness to help out today. This is something that is very special. I love this celebration every year. Can you hand out some over here? Let's see. So here's some for you. And I think Mary's going to hand you guys some, okay? All right. So... I have some more in my hand here, and if anybody runs out, just come right back up to me, and I'll give you some more, okay? 
So folks can take as many as they want. Are you ready to do this? No tripping each other. It's not a race. You can be in the back. You can be in the front. You can be wherever you want to start on the sides, okay? You ready to do it? All right. Share some palm branches with folks here, okay? And then when you're, when you're out of them or you're done with people, come on back to the front, all right? There you go. That okay? You good? One. You just want one? Okay. Now, is this the time where I have to instruct the people in the pews that these are not weapons? You should not sword fight with them. You should not poke each other in the eye with them. Some basic rules. Just want to make sure we're all on board. All right. Did anybody go upstairs to share? I know Hal is up there. Oh, and Dave is up there. Can someone go up there and share with them? All right, so they're, up, they're going up to share. If we, anybody here doesn't have them that wants them? Raise your hand if you would like something you don't have any yet. Or if you want more. Or if you want more. Oh, right over here. Right over here. All right. So my helpers, come back to me. Come on up here to the front. All right. We want to make sure you still have some palms. You still have some palms? Okay. Very good. All right. And I think we've got... Here come. All right. Excellent. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. My leader is going to lead us. And we're going to go around the church. We're going to, do a, we're going to walk up down the side. We're going to walk back down the middle. We're going to walk up the other side. We'll come back to the front. We're going to be all over the place while we're doing that. While we're doing that, we're going to cheer and everybody else is going to cheer too. Now, I could make this really long and make it, we have to say a lot of things. But you know what? I just like to make it into a simple cheer so what we're going to shout out is something that sounds pretty, pretty funny, but it's, it's special for this day. It's Hosanna in the highest. Okay? So who can, who can say that? Ready? On, on one, two, three. One, two, three. Hosanna in the highest. Okay? Now what do I have you saying, Hosanna in the highest? Actually, Hosanna kind of means save us. It's a prayer, basically. So it's saying, God, save us. But it's done in a way to say celebrating because we know God will save us because God loves us. So we're saying, God, save us. Hosanna in the highest. It's a prayer that we're offering up. A little bit different than we normally pray in here, right? Okay. Do you think we're ready to do this? Yes. Okay. I almost always like almost lose my voice on this Sunday. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a thing. But I am so excited to have a leader who's going to lead us to do this. Are you ready? Okay, excellent. So we're going to start off, we're going to go down this way, we're all going to follow you, okay? And we're going to lead the cheering and they're going to cheer with us. So are you ready to go? You ready to go? All right. Hosanna in the highest. 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 It's a long walk to Jerusalem. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. 
Hosanna in the highest. And we're going back to the front. Hosanna in the highest. 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 One more time. Hosanna in the highest. Woo! Wow. I loved having a fabulous leader. That was wonderful. You did a great job. Everybody did a great job. Our crowd that joined us did a great job. Our cheerers who were so excited to welcome Jesus did a great job. So can we go ahead and say wonderful job? Let's go ahead and offer our applause, okay? All right. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and we'll hear shortly this story from Scripture, okay? But today, we're all going to stay up here oh, yep. Yep, in church. Uh, so if you want to head back to your families, you can take your palm branches with you, all right? And uh, go ahead and be seated with your families, and we will continue on and hear more about this, all right? Uh, there are extra palm branches, and I will leave them right here in the front, and after the service, if folks would like more, you're welcome to go ahead and to grab more. Uh, so please do. There you go. Okay. All right. That was exciting. We were, we were wondering with school break this week and a lot of folks, you know, after years of not being able to get away or finally getting away, uh, we just didn't know. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to go ahead and have young and old, young at heart, everybody part of this. Wonderful. Thank you. Frankly, it's one of my favorite things every year. So let's have a moment and let's celebrate this in prayer. If you would, just join with me. God, Hosanna indeed. We give thanks even as we pray and ask for every bit of help you can give us in life. We come here and worship because we are in awe of everything you do, everything you've done. We're in awe of Jesus and the difference that Jesus has made in our lives and in this world. And we want to celebrate that. We want to give thanks. We want to shout it out. We want to sing for joy. So now during this worship, we ask that you would be here with us. Help us to celebrate. Hope, help us to open our hearts not only to you, but also to one another, just as Jesus did. And we do all of this even as we learn from Jesus' example, and we do so now by offering the prayer that he taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'd like to invite all of us to join together in a moment of humility. Um, as we worship, as we give thanks, we do so knowing that we are gifted in amazing ways by God. And in response, sometimes we can look at ourselves and we can try to ask that question of, wow, like, why? Why would I be gifted? I struggle. I don't do everything right. I do a lot of things I, I wish I could do better. But the response that we get over and over again is that God knows exactly who we are. And God loves us because God chooses to love us, because God sees who we can be, because God wants to be with us on the journey to try to get there. So if you would, join with me as we offer our confession as a way of coming back to God and then moving forward together. God of street parades and hosannas, we know that you are counting on us to speak out against oppression, to speak up for love and to speak hope to fear, but so often we are silent. We worry that we'll say the wrong thing, so we don't say anything at all. We worry that we'll offend, so we keep our convictions to ourselves. We worry that we'll speak up and won't be heard, so we stay silent. And meanwhile, the parade marches on. Unravel our fears, spark conviction in us, give us the courage to yell, Hosanna. Gratefully we pray, amen.
when that crowd was shouting out those words of that celebration, that festival, and they were shouting out, Hosanna, God save us. They were doing so joyfully because they knew in their heart that God would save them and has saved them and does save them. As you have offered your prayer of confession, you know in your heart that God has forgiven you and will forgive you and does forgive you today. So accept that gift, that new fresh start, and move forward in life with that opportunity and that blessing. Amen. Sorry. Good morning. Please listen to the word of God as it is recorded in the Bible. Our reading is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. May God bless to us the reading and the hearing of the scripture. Let us praise God for the world.
Now they sound wonderful and uh, you know, I know they do extra things to really make that happen, like bringing in ringers from Michigan to come sing in the choir, uh, Matt. So thank you for making the journey just to do this one performance. That's fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, but it's a gift. Music is so much a part of worship and celebration. Um, it is a gift in its many forms. It's not in vogue right now for a lot of reasons. It's not the most amazing thing to do anything to talk about something that involves the Russia or Russian military. And I know this um, as our prayers are very much with Ukraine right now and everything that's happening. Uh, so I, but I do want to share something completely out of fiction. Uh, but it, it's something that touched on this passage for me today. Um, the movie is Red October. Uh, and while back, talking about a, a Russian submarine and a chase that goes on and Tom Clancy and Sean Connery, all those things. And there's a scene in that movie, and it, it's one that stays with me very strongly because I'm very sensitive to music that's used in theater and in television shows and movies. Like, it can either be amazing and wonderful, it can be forgettable, or it can be a tragedy, like, you know, in terms of what's, what's, what's in there. And in that scene that I'm thinking of, it's early on, and this crew is setting sail in their brand new submarine with its brand new stealth technology, and they are getting ready to try it for the first time, a very big moment. And so as they switch over to propulsion that is absolutely silent, basically, and can't be tracked, this big moment of success for them and everything they've been training for, the crew celebrates by standing there, and they all begin to sing heartily the Russian national anthem, the Soviet national anthem. And they're singing and singing loudly, and it's a moment that builds up. And, of course, there they are now, going along in the ocean with absolutely no other sound that their engine has been changed over. And so their singing is the sound that's resonating. And, in fact, someone immediately says, well, they should, you know, they should be quiet. <laughs> it kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, and the captain says, no, you know, let them sing. And so the American submarine following them suddenly hears no engines, but hears the voices singing in the ocean. And the reason I bring that up is I, I'm always, it's a moving scene. It strikes me, this idea that it can't be contained. In that moment, how they're feeling, this moment of exaltation, this moment of feeling that they've succeeded, this moment of joy, they sing out, they sing together in unison with each other, and it's not something that can be just put back in the bottle. It has to be let out. Now, today in our reading about Palm Sunday, we hear Luke's account. This is something that is described in all four Gospels, although there are differences. Uh, today, actually, the prayer that you heard, the way that they sing, you don't actually hear the word Hosanna in Luke's reading, you hear it in others. Only in John do you actually hear the description of the palm branches. You hear about cloaks and other things taking place. So we kind of, we take all the witnesses and we put it together to kind of get a full picture of what was going on in the midst of all that excitement. But in Luke is where we get a particular moment that is one of the lines from scripture that I truly love. Now some of the Pharisees who are standing by, they see what's going on. They see the changeover from folks heading in for this festival. And now they seem to be cheering for this rabbi as he makes his way in. And they feel like it's kind of making a mockery of a very special and, and traditional moment. And so some of them, you know, call out and ask him to tell them to be quiet. Tell them to stop. Ask Jesus to do this. And Jesus' response to them, it says, If these were silent, even the rocks or even the stones would cry out. It's only found in this account out of Luke, and I love it. I love it to death. Now, depending on how your brain works, and I know they work a lot of different ways, when you hear about stones crying out, if everybody else were to stop singing, you may immediately go to some kind of an animated Saturday morning cartoon kind of a moment where you picture the rocks, you know, kind of having voices and faces and crying out. And it's not your fault if you do that, especially if you're of a certain age, if you were around in 1975, then you were around for a solid phenomenon that, that rocked the nation, and that was when this uh, gentleman got the idea of selling pet rocks to anybody who'd buy them. Anybody familiar with this? Yeah. It only lasted roughly about six months until people got over this and got, got tired of it, but for six magic months... 
This gentleman sold smooth rocks with eyes on them, you know, little googly eyes put onto the rocks. They were put in special boxes with air holes so that they could breathe. They came with a 32-page manual on the care of these rocks, you know, what you needed to go ahead and do. And they cost $4 a piece in 1975. He sold over a million of them. I just want to stop you for a moment and do the math on this, on these pet rocks. I am dying to have my pet rock idea. I, I just, every night, I wish I could have my pet rock idea. It'd be fantastic. But if you were around at the time, you were conditioned, perhaps, to go ahead and think about, okay, yeah, rocks crying out. Okay, well, I had one. I had a rock that was, you know, lived in my room. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can see that. Well, if that's not your thing, if that's not where your mind goes, or if you feel bad now that I've made fun of the pet rock that you have on your hearth, I'm sorry about that. Maybe we'll go somewhere a little bit different, class it up a little bit for our worship. We'll go to Mary Oliver, wonderful, wonderful poet of our area out there on the coast. She wrote a, a poem entitled, Do Stones Feel? She said, do stones feel, do they love their life? Or does their patience drown out everything else? When I walk on the beach, I gather a few white ones, dark ones, the multiple colors. Don't worry, I say, I'll bring you back. And I do. Is the tree as it rises delighted with its many branches, each one like a poem? Are the clouds glad to unburden their bundles of rain? Most of the world says, no, no, it's impossible. I refuse to think to such a conclusion. Too terrible it would be to be wrong. I love that. Different kind of relationship with what's around you, imagining that they could be feeling, that they could be experiencing, that they could be a part of these things. The creation dreamed up and made in different ways with God's help. There's something deep and abiding and powerful about that. This cry out that would be unstoppable, that even if the people were to stop cheering and crying out in that moment and having that, that celebration, that, that then if they were quiet, nature would scream out and sing and would celebrate and would pray. That vision is so powerful. And perhaps if you don't go to animated Saturday morning commercials and you don't go to pet rocks and maybe poetry isn't the thing that you have at your fingertips all the time, then maybe it's in the gift of music that you find something that speaks to you. Now, you may have heard through either Pete Seeger or Arlo Guthrie, or maybe later on, again, we can show our generations, maybe Enya, um, a wonderful, wonderful song. It's actually 619 in your hymnals. But this, this hymn, it says, My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the clear, though far off him, that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? You don't even know. I can't hear out of my left ear today right now, so it's like I'm having a day. I, I was totally off on the first hymn today, and you were very gentle with me. Um, music. Sometimes music is the answer. Sometimes music is the thing that brings it to life. I'm a firm believer. Worship and music, they go hand in hand. It opens up something within us. It, it, it brings something out of us that otherwise might stay contained where we just to sit around and hear words or sit in silence. There is a region, reason in scripture that we hear about angel song announcing the birth of Jesus. And we hear about choirs of angels singing in the heavens. There's a reason why we hear that. Because sometimes that there's this unstoppable praise, this music that needs to come out in all its many beautiful forms. Well, even as that needs to come out, however, by listening to it, by singing, by sharing, by playing your trumpet, by playing your organ, whatever it is, 
This passage is trying to tell us there's something else that has to come out. When it's time, it's time. The purposes of God will be fulfilled no matter what anybody might say or what they would prefer or what would be more comfortable or would cause less problems. God's purposes will be fulfilled just as they are about to be in this coming week as Jesus is about to show the courage and the faith and the message of God's love in the face of anything in this world and even more than that, God's power of life even over death. Nothing is going to stand in the way of that. And as that is coming, and as the songs are being lifted, the question that we are being asked is, will we join in with what is happening in God's time, or are we just going to get out of the way? That's the answer that we have to find within ourselves, because it's time, and the parade is happening, and the singing can't be stopped, and the voices are crying out, and we have to decide, are we going to join in with what God is up to, or are we going to get out of the way? Will we praise, or will we run away? Palm Sunday is this magical, wonderful moment where we hear the praise, we hear the singing, we see people recognizing something amazing about Jesus, and I've talked about it before, there are probably all sorts of different ideas about who Jesus was, what was going on, there's as many different ideas about that as there were people around in that moment, but the result gathered together is an expression of joy, and even as Jesus rides on having told others what he knows will come, because it's inevitable, because of how people are and what people will do in this world, even as he makes his way into Jerusalem and he has that hanging upon his heart, here come voices of cheer and welcome and cloaks spread out on the road in front of his humble ride as he makes his way in. And it's a powerful, powerful moment. One that, like the transfiguration, it can be tempting to sit there and come down from that mountain and say, let's just build some little churches right here. Let's stay right here. This is pretty great. This is amazing. Let's not go any further. But of course, the Bible goes further. Jesus goes further. And while it's lovely to stay in moments that are just a time to celebrate and to be renewed and to sing and to rejoice... We have to go further, too, because Jesus went, and we need to respond that we will follow. We're not getting out of the way. So as we move forward into this week, on this Sunday, we've already heard what happens as he makes his way in, in the midst of a celebration, a kind of Fourth of July moment where they're thinking about how Judas Maccabeus threw off the foreign rulers, got them out of the country, and they celebrate, and they have that time, and here Jesus is in the midst of it, and harps and cymbals and music and just everything all at once. Then, on that next day, on Monday, we hear he goes into the temple where money exchange is happening, where people are being taken advantage of just so they can worship God right there on the grounds of the temple, and he begins overturning tables, and in the midst of that, talks to those around him. He tries very, very hard to help them to finally hear and understand who God is and what that should mean for their life. On Tuesday, he taught in parables, and he warned people about those who would try to pull them away from their faith and their belief, and he talked about events that were to come that would be very hard, including the destruction of the temple. On Wednesday, we don't really have details. Perhaps they rested. Perhaps they had a time to be together. But Thursday, we do. Thursday, they celebrated. They got together in that upper room. They celebrated Passover as other Jewish people would be doing all around them. But on that particular Thursday and on that last meal he would share with his disciples, he began to help them to see it in a whole other way. And even as they continued to celebrate God's saving acts in history, he said, now, whenever you have these times, whenever you celebrate with this bread and with this cup, I want you to think about me, and I want you to think about what God is doing today. Then on Friday, following betrayal and arrest and imprisonment and desertion and false trials and denial and condemnation and beatings and sentencings, he carried his own cross to the place of the skull and he was crucified with two other prisoners. Saturday, he was placed in the tomb that a rich man named Joseph offered. And then Sunday... Sunday, the stone was rolled away. 
Sunday, people came to understand one by one that Jesus was alive. He appeared to Mary, to Peter, to two disciples on the road to Emmaus, to 11 disciples gathered in a locked room. It was just the beginning. But it was the beginning of something wonderful. We can't stop here. We can't stop at this parade. We can't stop before the hard stuff because through that hard stuff we come to something even more amazing. And we need to make that journey. So I want to close out by offering one more poem by, the same, by, excuse me, by Anne Weems this time. And it's called Holy Week. And I'll just offer this as we set our minds to the journey ahead of us. Holy is the week. Holy, consecrated, belonging to God. We move from hosannas to horror with the predictable ease of those who know not, know not what they do. Our hosannas sung, our palms waved, let us go with passion into this week. It's a time to curse fig trees that do not yield fruit. It's a time to cleanse our families of any blasphemy. It's a time to green Jesus as the Lord's anointed one, to lavishly break our alabaster and to pour perfume out for him without counting the cost. It's a time for preparation. The time to give thanks and break bread is upon us. The time to give thanks and drink of the cup is imminent. Eat. Drink, remember, on this night of nights, each one must ask, as we dip our bread in the wine, is it I? And on that darkest of days, each of us must stand beneath the tree and watch the dying if we are to be there when the stone is rolled away. The only road to Easter morning is through the unrelenting shadows of that Friday. Amen. Well, I sang, so now it's your turn to sing. Um, so if you would grab those hymnals and look to number, hymn number 129, lift up your heads, O mighty gates, and I invite you to, to rise and sing if, if that's comfortable for you. Thank you so much. Please be seated if you would. And I'd like to invite all of us now just to take a moment and as we think about God's word and we think about the call to not get out of the way but to follow and to celebrate, we should think of the ways we can also celebrate by sharing what's been shared with us. And whether that be through gifts in the offering plate or prayer requests in the offering plate, whether that be giving online, whether that be finding ways to volunteer, to serve, to lead, to pray for others, to be in ministry with others, however it is, 
Lift that up to God now and ask God's blessings upon your endeavors that it might be for God's glory. Dearest God, we ask that you'd bless the gifts that we share in so many different ways as we help to make this ministry possible as a community and as we reach out in our lives in other ways to help to spread your love. We ask God that you'd help us each day to realize the joy we find in that and give us courage to try new things, new ways, so that we might truly be a gift to those we encounter in our journey through your creation. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much. Please be seated for just a moment if you would. And I'd like to invite us all to uh, center ourselves and to think about any prayers that we'd like to lift up, joys or concerns. We have listed in our bulletin, as we always do, some of the things that we're aware of. Um, And so I'd ask that you might include those in, in what you share with God now. But if you would, be with me in a time of prayer. God, as we gather here, as we celebrate, as we find ways to truly offer our prayers that you save us, that you help us to be a part of what's happening to save this world, we ask God that you continue to lead us and to challenge us and to surround us with others, to be family in this journey. As we hear about events taking place around the world, including especially what's happening in Ukraine right now, God, we ask continued leadership and guidance from you, and as the Prince of Peace, we ask that Christ might find ways to lead to wisdom and lead to a time where there is an end of bloodshed. God, as we think about our lives here, we know there are many different things that are happening, including grief as folks struggle, knowing that the world has changed when folks aren't present with us in the same way, even as we hear and celebrate your promise that death is not more powerful than your love and your presence. But today especially, we want to offer up prayers as we think about Sheila and Richard Bowker who passed away. These are parents, a mom and dad who passed away. We also want to lift up uh, prayers of love and support for the family and friends of Kendra who died as a result of addiction. 
And so we want to think about everybody right now dealing with that loss and the tragedy and others who find themselves in that same situation. God, where there is need for healing, we ask that your touch, your wisdom, your guidance, and your patience many times would be a part of that process. You have knit us together, and you can find ways to help us to move forward and find restoration and shalom when we need it in so many forms. And as we prepare to leave this time of worship, God, we ask that you'd help us to find ways to carry with us so many gifts that you've offered us, but among them, a gift of a sense of joy and gratitude that cannot be contained, that comes out no matter how hard we might try sometimes to keep it contained and within, that is music to our souls and to the ears of others. So we ask that you'd hear these prayers, that you would respond in your wisdom, and that you would know in our hearts that we give thanksgiving each and every moment. Amen. Folks, one more time, let's lift our voices in song, and you're going to find in your bulletins an insert, and that that is the hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. So once again, if you're comfortable, please rise, and we'll sing this together. Folks, thank you again for being a part of, again, one of my favorite traditions in the church year. Um, we're going to hear some beautiful music after this prayer, and I invite you following that to head downstairs to the Fellowship Hall where we have refreshments and coffee and the ability to go ahead and visit and be family here at the church. Um, but just for a moment, let's ask God's blessing as we depart. God, thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. And as we move forward in the days that come, help us to remember, help us to understand the preciousness of each moment, each experience. Help us to understand the message of love, of hope, of victory that can lead us forward and make all things possible. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.